Um, what are actually like the most common types of hair loss? Because we, we all know that there's male pattern baldness, and uh -huh. I think people just kind of think that, but you actually are saying there's a lot more to hair loss than, than what people think. Yes, yeah, so male pattern hair loss in particular, I think is more commonly recognized because you can walk around and see men all the time who are thinning and losing their hair, right? But there are other types, and it really depends on the demographic. So uh, in non-black groups, uh, telogen effluvium is the most common form of hair loss, and that is a medical term for shedding. So shedding hair loss is the most common kind in most groups. So telogen effluvium comes from the term telogen, which just means shedded hairs. Your hair grows in different phases of the hair cycle. There's the growing phase, which most of us have for two to five years. It just depends on our genetics and other factors, but most of our hair grows for two to five years, and the majority of our hairs are in the growing phase, which is why we have hair on our head in the first place, mm -hmm. and that will last for, like I mentioned, two to five years. 80% of our hairs to 90% are in that phase. Then those hairs, it all happens in waves, and so we don't really realize it, but those hairs will slowly transition to the resting phase, which lasts about two to three weeks, and only about two to three hairs are in that resting phase, and that's called the catagen phase. And then we have the telogen phase, which are only about 10 to 15% of our hairs at any given time, and those hairs are in about 100 to 150 hairs at any state shedding. And we usually notice those when we're in a shower, uh, shampooing and conditioning our hair, or when we're combing our hair. And I think for that's those when of us, everybody has that ball of hair in their shower. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That chunk of hair in the shower. And when I do it, it's a big chunk, <laughs> but you know, it's okay. So uh, the telogen hairs, you know, that should only be 100, 150 hairs at any given time. But sometimes you can have an inciting factor that will shift those hairs and you can go from 100, 150 hairs to anywhere between 400 and 1,000 hairs every single day. And that is really disconcerting because you're seeing hairs coming out in clumps. When you, whenever you're touching your hair, you're seeing it, you're seeing it on the floor, people are commenting about the hairs that you're shedding. Usually that happens two to three months after an inciting factor has occurred. The most common inciting factors are thyroid abnormality, iron deficiency, medication change, hormone changes, and other nutritional abnormalities or stressors to the system. Generally, once those inciting factors have been corrected for, then six to 12 months later, those hairs will cycle all back in and then you don't notice as much shedding. When you're in that phase though, you do notice that when you gather the hairs maybe into a ponytail, that the ponytail is less dense and, and smaller, and then you can see more hair loss along the hairline as well. So that's telogen effluvium, that's the most common kind. The next most common kind in non-black uh, populations or demographics is androgenetic alopecia or patterned hair loss. And as I mentioned, male pattern and female pattern hair loss are more recognizable because that's what we see in the populations. So you can see men walking around with thinning hair and that's almost considered a normal variant of hair loss. But when women experience it, it's a lot more disconcerting because people don't see it as normal, even though it does affect a large percentage of the population. What happens with that particular form of hair loss is the hairs thin and you start to see the part width become wider and wider. In male pattern hair loss, it's patterned, so the hairline begins to recede and it becomes smooth bald in the frontal hairline and in the vertex of the scalp or the crown of the scalp. In women, it's more that the hairline here in the central part width become more and more see-through and become, uh, the scalp becomes more visible. So that's androgenetic alopecia, and how that happens is you have cells underneath the hair bulb. They're called dermopapillar cells. Those cells are responsible for producing normal hairs that are thicker in that cycle normally. When those cells start to diminish, those hairs get thinner and thinner. What causes those cells to thin out uh, are several factors. One of the main is genetics. Genetically, people that have that problem have more receptors for testosterone here on the scalp, and they bind with greater affinity, and that is why you lose hair more up here than in the back. So that's androgenetic alopecia. In folks of African descent, there are other forms of hair loss that are more common. One of them is traction alopecia. So traction alopecia is a form of hair loss that occurs when you have tension or traumatic hairstyles. 
and that usually presents in the frontal hairline where you have shortening of the hairs here and then eventually thinning and to the point where sometimes it goes smooth bald in the frontal hairline. So usually those tension hairstyles have to re be repeated over and over again over time where you're getting mild inflammation around the hair follicles and that leads to tension, tenderness, burning, and itching and then eventually the hair shortens and it falls out. That is a very preventable form of hair loss, so it's very important that we have education and knowledge about what's causing it because uh, we can prevent it and it doesn't have to, ha have to happen. And unfortunately, it occurs in the areas that are most likely to frame your face and give you the best cosmetic outcome. And so obviously, losing the hair here can be really disconcerting. Ryan's telling me I'm uh, taking too much time. No, no, well, no. Hold on, okay. I, have, okay. Okay. <laughs> I have one more time of hair loss that I need All to right. discuss. let's hear it. Okay, hear this it. last one that is very important. There are other forms, and we can go into more detail with those, but uh, there's one called central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, or CCCA. That is a very common form of hair loss in black women in particular, and it's very important that we discuss it because it is a scarring inflammatory form of hair loss where you can go smooth bald here in the crown of the scalp. And you can really lose a lot of hair and it can be very disfiguring. And that is more genetically caused and there are factors that can make it more likely, including tight hairstyles or tension or traumatic hairstyles. Sometimes relaxers can cause it or may be associated with it. But it's very important that we recognize that form of hair loss because we can prevent it from getting worse and we can often get the hair to grow back. So knowing about that is very important. One more time also <laughs> is alopecia areata or alopecia totalis. This is an autoimmune condition where we have immune complexes and antibodies attacking the hair bowl and you can go smooth bald in these areas. You can often lose the eyebrows and eyelashes as well. Or they can be circular patches where the hairs aren't growing in. So these are the more common forms of hair loss.